From a bar stool to that Evan Rood, Sunday morning in a church pew, in a deer stand, in a hayfield, in an interstate back to Nashville, in a Chevrolet with the windows down, me and him just riding around. Hi, I'm Kristen Ostrander from Music That Inspires, and that is one of the most impactful lyrics of the song that we're going to cover today, which is Where I Find God by Larry Fleet. It is written by Larry Fleet and Connie Ray Harrington, and I just love this song. I love this song because I understand that a lot of people struggle to find God. They feel like there are a lot of people think you have to go to a church building, you have to dress up all stuffy, you have to dust off an old hymnal, you have to say a Hail Mary or go through a priest or a pastor or a preacher to get closer to God. And what I love about this song is it just really captures most of our experiences when it comes to God. Because honestly, he's way closer than we think. And he's not just in a church building or with those old people or wherever it is that you may or may not have been taught to find God, but he's way closer than you think. And his word tells us so many different ways that he is found. We're going to cover some of that today, but just going through this song, if you haven't heard it, make sure that you uh, look at the Music That Inspires playlist or add it to your playlist. You can watch it both on YouTube or listen to it on Spotify or your favorite um, places. We have all the official links in the show notes here, so make sure that you look for those as well. But this song talks about where we find God. And you know what? Sometimes it is Sunday morning in a church pew, and other times it is me and him just driving around. And I love that about God because he's not far off. A lot of times we rely on our feelings to be like, where is God? I can't feel him. I can't see him. But if we open our eyes and we just look, stay quiet, stay in the moment for just a second, he is everywhere and he says he's in us so i want to open the word for a second and talk about some of these things because he says it himself and his word is truth and he says you can find me and you can find him in unconventional places we don't really think of like that boat out on the water and in that deer stand or wherever it is that you connect with yourself and connect with god he can be found anywhere and one of the things that god actually says in romans 1 is what can be known about him is plain to everyone. So Romans 1 19 says, for what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. That means them, all of us. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen in creation, in things that have been made. So that's Romans 1, 19 and 20. And the NIV says, I usually read from the ESV, just so you know, but there's all tons of different versions to each his own. It's still the word of God. So read it and study it and listen to it. But it says, everything about God has been clearly seen in nature. In nature, is God is everywhere. He has created absolutely everything. And all of his attributes can be seen in creation. He is the creator. If you love creation and you love actually being creative, that is part of God in you. In Colossians 1, it says, Colossians 1.15 says, He, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn among all creation. For by him, all things were created, heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. What that point is that if you find Jesus, you have found God. And John 1.1 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god jesus is the word he is with god and is god if you have friendship with him if then you god and he says his spirit indwells in you once you know him so that's how close you are to him his spirit is within you so when you say where do you find god sometimes people have church hurt right someone has said something done something hurts you maybe a authority or someone all that and that is very real and there's a lot of people that will not enter the doors of a church because they've been hurt by human beings sinful flawed human beings but guess what god says he is everywhere 
You can connect with him. You can talk to him. You can be with him right here, right now, wherever you're walking, listening, sitting, watching. Right here, right now. He is so close to us. He's so close to us. God made, Acts 17 says, God made the world and everything in it. Being the Lord of heaven and earth does not live in temples made by man. Acts 17, 24. Does not live in temples made by man, aka the church building, the four walls. Now, I'm not saying don't go to church. We go to church, why? Because we acknowledge and affirm and worship that he is the only true king. And he asks us to regularly assemble with other believers and tell of his good works. Tell stories about him. Tell people how he's shown up in your life. Ask people, be mentored, mentor them, be disciples, right? But that doesn't mean it has to be made in temple by human hands. He doesn't dwell there. He has the indwelling Holy Spirit within us. Where two or three are gathered in his name, he is with them. So if you've ever been hurt by the church or feel like, gosh, I haven't gone to church or it just has a negative connotation for you, God does not live in temples made by hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything at all. Acts 17, 25. And then if you jump down to Acts 17, 17, 27, he says, okay, I have to start at 26. Okay, he said, he made from one man, Jesus, every nation of mankind. So he's talking about Adam there. And he made from one man, Adam, every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods for the boundaries of their dwelling place and that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. That's Acts 17, 27. They should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, yet he is actually not far from us. That is Acts 17, 27. In him we live and move and have our being. He is not far away. The truth is, where we find God is wherever we look for him, wherever we seek in him. Have you ever seen God moving in the face of a child? or a loving act of kindness that someone else has done, or just out of the clear blue sky, God decides to bless you. This happened to us the other day. My, my children and I went out to breakfast at our favorite place, and uh, we were actually sitting at the dining counter there because there was no other tables, and there was a gentleman uh, around the corner from us, like just right there, so we were almost eyeball to eyeball. And he's this big buff guy, and he orders, we had four plates of food. And we just chatted with him for just a second. It was just casual conversation, whatever. And we were joking about how much food he was eating. Of course, he was like this bodybuilding type. And he was really kind. And my son's funny. So he was chatting with him for a second. And then we go about our business, eat our food, whatever. And then at the end, they're like, your bill's been covered. Your bill's been covered. Now we have a feeling that it was him just chatting with him or whatever. He was a very kind man and everything. But praise the Lord. He just shows up. He shows up whenever you're looking for him. Whenever you're looking. And most of the time when you're not looking. Whether that's a line in this song, whether I'm looking for him or not, that's where I find God. See, the truth is he's easy to find. He's closer than we think. He shows up everywhere. He is everywhere. So let's go back to the scripture for just a second because I have four other scriptures that talk about these things. And then I want to tell you a little story about the, the closeness and farthest, farthest of God and how big he truly is. And that we can hear this song and really connect God anywhere. Because sometimes a lot of us are carrying some hurt from people before. But that doesn't mean that God is hurting us. He says, come to me, all you are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's closer than we think. Psalm 121.3, he will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Now, we could talk for another half an hour about the fact that God doesn't sleep. He needs no sleep. He is always working. He will not slumber. He will keep your feet. He's that close to us. While we're sleeping, while we're fumbling through life sometimes, he is always working. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Can I ask you, is anybody out there? brokenhearted or have a crushed spirit, he says he is near to you. Draw near to him. Even if you're drawing near because you're brokenhearted and you're mad, God is big. He can handle all of your big emotions, all of them. So if you're brokenhearted and you're mad and you're blaming God for something, just feel your feels and tell him. He wants to be near to you to speak the truth to you. 
He loves you as his child. If you're his child, if you have accepted Jesus into your life, you are a child of God. And this is how he loves you. He will not let your foot be moved. He keeps you. He will not slumber. And he is near to the brokenhearted. Y'all, I've been brokenhearted many times, crushed in spirit, wanting, longing for something that just never came. It wasn't what was best for me. He said he's near. You have parts of your heart that are broken? Reach out to God. Take a walk in nature and just observe birds and animals and bugs. Ugh, I don't like bugs, but God, why'd you have to make bugs? I understand it's part of the created order, but I could live without all of them. Thank you very much, especially mosquitoes and spiders and bees. Okay, we could go on and on. But if you're really seeking God and you feel like he is far away, he says he is near and he is does not lie. He doesn't make mistakes. He does not lie. So if he says he's near, just reach out. Talk to him right here, right now. Write down your prayers. Send them down the line, whatever it is. Say, God, I feel like you're far away. Draw near to me. I'm dying over here. Can you hear my desperation? This is my life. Draw near. He saves the crushed in spirit. He keeps watch over your soul. Proverbs 24, 12. He keeps watch over your soul. Keeps watch. A watchkeeper back in the day, a watchtower, is someone who didn't sleep or slumber. They made sure that all of the enemies were staying at bay. They're the ones standing up in the tower with the gun, watching, walking around in circles, making sure the enemies stay away. And if they come near, snuffs them out. God keeps watch over your soul. He's never far. He cares about your soul the details of your lives. So whether that's in your Evan Rude boat and you're fishing, whether you're in that deer stand, driving in your car somewhere, he's not far. Whether you're looking for him or not, that's where you're going to find God, wherever you want to find him. He says he is near. He's keeping watch. Proverbs 15, 3 says, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch over the evil and the good. He's close by. Even in the depths of your despair, even in your own sin and shame, he is near. He wants to be close to you, but you have to ask him. Say, Lord, where are you? I'm finding you. I'm looking for you. Be near to him. Now, there's a story, unfortunately, I have no idea. I even did a Google search and trying to find the original author of this story. And I don't know who that is. So I'm trying to give credit where it's due, but I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to tell this how big is God story. And I looked for origination of it. So if anybody knows, please comment, send it to me, whatever. I want to give credit to the original author. But I was just at a, a, a women's conference recently and Karen Eman, who is amazing and funny and awesome, told this story. And I remembered it because it's so real. And then I looked it up to make sure I had the facts right and everything else. But anyway, she's amazing. Follow her. She's got some great books out there as well. But anyway, I heard the story from her and I know that it's original somewhere else. Don't know the reference. So please forgive me there. But here is this story about a little boy asks his dad, how big is God? And the dad's, oh, that's an interesting question. And an airplane happened to be flying outside right now. He's, oh, you see that airplane? You see it? How big is that? And he's, wow, it's really, really, really small. You can see it way up there, but it's just tiny small. So far away. So he takes his son and he said, get in the car. I'm going to show you something else. Drives to the airport and gets up close and personal with an airplane. And he says, how big is this airplane now? He's, wow, it's huge. He's just looking up at it with big, huge eyes. And then his dad, in all of his wisdom, says, the closer you are, the bigger he gets. The closer you are to God, the bigger he gets. And that's just like thinking about that airplane. He seems so small and so distant and maybe so angry or so out of reach when you're looking at so far away from the ground, looking up into the sky. But the closer you get to that airplane, AKA that God, closer you get to God, the bigger he gets, the more you know him, the closer you can't help but draw. Why? Because he has unlimited abundance. He has so much grace to give, so much love, so much comfort, so much wisdom. 
Is that how you feel about God? Is that how you think about it? If not, I encourage you to draw closer. And there's only a few ways you can do that. There's lots of ways, first of all. <laughs> I have, but there's several key ways that the word tells us to get closer to him. First of all, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. That doesn't mean you have to go to church every Sunday night, Wednesday, Thursday, every time the door is open. Although you've heard me before, I encourage you to be in community with other believers, whatever that means for you. If you're not a believer, I encourage you to reach out, reach out to me. I'm going to have a conversation with you. If you're on the fence about God and what you truly believe and what you need to know, y'all, the word is living and active. I know people think it's old or outdated or whatever, but he says faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ right? Romans 10, 17. So how can that be? Audio books, audio Bible. You can get almost everything for free. The Bible is for free online. If you have online, you can literally go to Bible Gateway or some of these other things and look at every translation of every scripture reading online for free. And I know most of you have phones in your hands. So even if you don't own a Bible, you can listen to the word. You can listen to an audio Bible. You can listen to audio books about the Bible. You can listen to podcasts, YouTube, TV, music, nature, conversations with other believers. God promises if you draw near to him, he draws closer to you. So it doesn't always have to have this specific detailed thing. You know what? If, you, if the best they can do is read a devotional every day, Cry out to God and just be honest. He is so big. He can handle everything. And guess what? His word says he already knows. Psalm 139 tells us all. He knows our thoughts from afar. He knows when we stand up and when we sit down. All he's asking us is just to draw near. He says, I am not scary. Yes, he is awesome and powerful. And he is the ultimate judge of all of us. Yes. But he says, come. I will give you grace, mercy, wisdom, help you make decisions. I will give you peace. Anybody here want some peace? Oh, can I get an amen? So in all of these different ways, going back to the song, and thank you, Larry and Connie, for writing this song and really just giving people out there hope that maybe they've been out of touch with God for a long time or thought God didn't love them and they just are too far removed or they haven't been to church in ages. Guess what he says? He says, I'm right here. I'm everywhere. I'm in the boat. I'm in the car. I'm at your job. I'm at your side. I watch over you when you're sleeping. I don't sleep. I don't stop working. I don't stop chasing after you. So maybe while we're running away, he is chasing after us with his goodness. So whether it's audio, no, I do believe this scripture. We have to believe the word of God. What he says is true. Faith comes by hearing. And if you're struggling with your faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So whether that's through any of these mediums, 15 minutes a day, five minutes a day, get closer and then look, just open your eyes and look, God, where are you? Say that. I am having a hard time seeing you or feeling you or knowing that you're real. God, show up for me. His answer is always, I'm here. I'm watching. I'm listening. I pour out my goodness. I chase after you with my grace. So friends, one of the other ways we can really do that is to love one another. First John 4, 7 and beyond. Love one another for love comes from God. That's another way we see God in one another. Everyone who has been loved understands. This is how God showed his love for us. He sent his only son to die that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved first, but that God loved us. He says we ought to love one another. It says in 1 John 4, 12, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. So one of the ways that you can show God to other people and see it for yourself is through the love of other people, loving one another. And what does love look like? Yeah, I know this could be a whole giant sermon. We're going to end right here, but I just want to tell you, if you don't know how to love people, if it's not your strong suit, if you've just feel like you're rough around the edges and you just don't know or you've been really hurt and wounded, 1 Corinthians 13 gives us the picture of love. Patient, kind, 
keeps no records of wrongs, bears with one another, holds each other up, is not becoming or unbecoming or rude, not self-seeking. So one of the ways that you can show up for others is to love them. Mind you, it doesn't say be fruit examiners and judge them and not be around them. And oh my gosh, I might get dirty if I hang around some of these people. No, just love. Mercy and grace. 1 Corinthians 13. So you guys, I just want to first of all encourage you, listen to this song. Whether you're looking for him or not. That's what it says. Another one of my favorite lines, and I'm going to close with this, is in the one of the other parts of the song. I don't want to reveal it to you if you haven't heard it. I really want you to sit and just listen to the song after you hear this podcast. Please just put it on. Another three and a half minutes of your life, you will absolutely love it. But it says, I put my out one day out on the water when the fish just wouldn't bite. I could hear my old man saying, son, just be still. You can't find this kind of peace in a bottle or a pill. And I don't know about you guys, but we've had addictions in our families and different places, struggled with some things myself over the years. And there's nothing more true than that. The peace of God passes all understanding. Ain't no high like the most high. And as you get closer to him, everything else pales in comparison. Draw close. If you don't feel like that right now, that's okay. Just take one step closer. Listen. Watch. Be intentional about just being honest about your feelings, being honest about your thoughts. He already knows them anyway. And he's here to, he's the great healer. He wants to heal your hurts. He wants to draw near to you and close up those wounds that you've had over the years. So draw near, look for him wherever you are. He will be there. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. And whether you're looking for him or not, he's looking for you. I hope you guys will listen to this song and just let it wash over you and maybe make a list of yourself of, of where you find God, where you feel closest to God, where you can observe and feel his presence more than anything else. Whatever that is for you, it's individual. And that's amazing. God meets us in this place, wherever place that you are, that you see him. So thank you for listening. Again, give this song a listen. And Larry, if you're out there and you want to sit and discuss this song, I would love to have you on the podcast. I invite every artist to do that as well. If you happen to catch this review at all and this resonates in some way, please share it with somebody else and just let them be encouraged, not only by music. I find God in music. I love the harmonies and melodies and different instruments and different cultural music and just I'm so moved by that. So when I'm really seeking... I'm hitting that playlist and I'm like, Lord, let me find you in this place because I, that's just how I end up filling up. And most, a lot, there's a lot of music that has a lot of scripture in it as well. So that's listening as well. So if it's just music for now, be inspired by the music. That's why music in, that inspires exists. So I can introduce you to new songs, but also just pour into your soul wherever you're at right now. God meets you in that place. So thank you for listening, you guys. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to Music That Inspires. And if you want to have a conversation, just reach out to me. You can go to musicthatinspires.com and I'd love to have a chat. Until next time, we'll see you.